So we rendered out our very first setup in Houdini, and I want to take this very moment to again mention how important attributes are throughout Houdini, and to show you their power and what they are capable of, and what in turn you are capable of with creating with them, let's not display this grid here and also just switch off the lights for now and also in here, let's just uncheck light enabled. I want to dive back into our geo here, pressing enter, make sure our camera isn't locked to the viewport, and instead of scattering those points on which we copy spheres them, so let's highlight those points here, instead of copying them onto a volume that we created out of the sphere here, I want to just flatly scatter them onto a grid. So I'm just going to drop down a grid, which is Houdini's lingo for a plane. Wire this into our scatter node here and highlight the scatter. And also, let's just prematurely select the handles here, the tool handles, so we can see this grid here. And this grid currently has a very coarse resolution of 10 by 10 polygons, which is fine for what you'd usually do with it. However, for the trick I want to show you, let's increase its resolution to say 100 by 100 rows and columns, so we have a more finely divided grid here. Let's just get rid of the sphere and the ISO offset by pressing delete. And before we do anything further, let's highlight the scatter cell and have a look at these grayed out options here. One of those options here is the relax iterations, which makes sure that the points are evenly distributed and you can dial up the iterations. The more points you have, the longer this process is going to take in the end. So the default of 10 relax iterations usually is fine. And that just keeps the point apart and evenly distributed. And currently we're just uniformly scattering those points onto our grid. However, up here I can check something called density attribute, which in this case results in an error. So let's click on this error symbol here when hovering over the node and we see the error is invalid point density attribute specified. It must be a numeric attribute, but can be a point, vertex, primitive or detail attribute. So basically what Houdini is telling us, there is no density attribute currently on this grid here. So let's uncheck this again and middle mouse onto our grid and we see there's only one point attribute, that's the position of the grid's points. So let's create a density attribute. And in this case, I want to be able to kind of paint in the attribute. So let's do that using an attribute paint node, which will wire in between here. And by default, when we middle mouse on this, the attribute we create here and paint in is called mask. However, under the attributes tab here, we can set the attribute name to be density, which is what our scatter stop expects. And now when we set our view flag to the attribute paint node here and have our tool handle selected, we see this tiny gizmo here, which is a paintbrush. And by using the mouse scroll wheel, we can increase or decrease its size and then use it to paint something onto this geometry here. For example, an N for Intagma. Hmm. Let's just see if that did anything. Yeah, and if we go back to our main tab and reselect our tool handle, we can see the attribute we just painted in with the areas where the attribute has a high value in red and the areas where the attribute has a low value in this purple blue here. So when we set the view flag to the scatter sop again and highlight this and now check density attribute, we are now getting those points scattered in the areas where we painted them. And the nice thing about the procedural, generative, non-destructive workflow of Houdini is that at any given point in time, I can go back up here in the attribute paint node and adjust the areas and paint in additional areas. Let's just have a look at this. What went wrong here? Let's just undo this again up here. Yeah, and repaint this. So now we can again select the scatter and we see we're scattering points here. However, I want to get rid of that blob. So I'll undo this again, highlight the scatter. And then we're at randomizing the P scale and the color as well. And then we're copying spheres onto those points. Another thing I want to mention here is that currently we have our sphere scaled down. So by default, this should be set to one. And instead we should adjust the sphere size using the P scale value. So let's dial that back to say 0 0.05 and say 0 0.2, like so. And if you have this, these truncated zeros, that's a rounding error for what the float value looks inside Houdini. So let's just click on this name here and it'll disappear. Okay, let's increase the number of points we're scattering in there by increasing the number of forced total count here, say to 150. And you can see these intersections happening, for example, here or here. And that is because we are manipulating the points individual scale after we scattered it. So what we need to do after we set the P scale here, and you can see those were the points that we're intersecting, we need to relax them. We need to push them apart depending on their actual P scale value that we've written on them. And we can do that using a node called point relax, which I'm going to wire in here and I'll highlight it. 
and nothing much happens here. Because this, the way it is set up currently in our node tree here, needs a geometry to which those points should adhere. So I will wire in just the grid that we scattered those points onto. And you can see now these points here have been pushed apart. Let's highlight our spheres here. And you can see Houdini took care of resolving those intersections by pushing those individual points apart. Let's just disable this node here briefly to show you the difference. And again, this is our slightly more complex flowchart of what we built, slightly more complex node tree, this time being able for you to paint the areas where you want points scattered and also relaxing them after we set the random p-scale value onto each point. What I like to do in those setups where you can dial in or strongly manipulate the looks of the setup, I like to color code those nodes. So by hitting C over your node view here, let's just give them a red color so everyone sees what's happening there and that's where you can paint. So let's highlight the out. And in the next video, let's have a look at how we can use those attribute values that we just painted here to distort the underlying grid that we're using. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.